this thing is about the plan, so I will get started. So, hello everyone. My name is Wu Ming Zhang. I'm a graduate student uh, in University of Pittsburgh. I'm right working with Dr. Forloff. And uh, today, this will be a satellite talk of the Superconducting Layout Conference. And I'm going to talk about the Superconducting Layout Effect in Indian Antimonite nanowires with thin shells. Uh, our manuscript is still under polishing, so uh, any questions or comments are appreciated. So this will uh, this is a collaborative work with uh, T.O.N. Howard University of Santa Barbara and the University of Grenoble. Okay, so uh, let me see. So first, uh, I would like to uh, as a background, I would like to uh, introduce the anomalous stress effect in one nanowires. In previous paper uh, series already predicted that uh, if we consider a 1D nanowire uh, Joseon junction device, which has strong spin orbital interaction and in an external magnetic field, the time reversal symmetry will be, will be broken. So there will be an extra phi zero term in the current phase relation. And uh, in their paper, they think that uh, when multiple connection bands are considered, uh, we should also see the symmetry of polarization also breaks. So we get a direction dependent critical current. And uh, in 2020, uh, in a 2D device, uh, which uh, lack of central inversion symmetry, uh, this, uh, uh, this direction dependent critical current is observed and uh, named as subcanonic delta effect. So here you can see that this effect is driven by an external field along certain axis which is perpendicular to the current flow and the uh, implant in the substrate plan. And uh, what they also claim that uh, it's uh, uh, if you apply a current source, which is in between this like different critical current flows through positive and negative bias. So then um, by, so like uh, by just controlling control the uh, magnetic field, and then you can get uh, some like uh, delta-like devices. And they also introduced that uh, it should be induced by the rush bus signal the coupling. So here I'm just uh, bringing some figures from uh, like Liang Fu and uh, James String He. So <clears throat> uh, to like uh, give you a naive model, how do we have the supporting layout? So first, if we consider a uh, external field which is parallel to the current flow, we should have a symmetry critical current diffraction patterns. But if we uh, think of uh, there will be a spin orbital interactions and uh, it will result an effective field, which is perpendicular to both the momentum of charge carriers and the uh, electric field, which is results of the differential of chemical potential. Then um, if we apply external field along certain, uh, the same axis with this effective field, so the net field will actually be like enhanced or decreased by this like effective spinometer field. And also because this effective field is uh, dependent to this uh, current flow. So, so that will give us a skew shape. And uh, because maximum and minimum of critical current in field are shifted to opposite directions. And uh, then I would like to show you how do we do our like uh, experiments. First about the fabrication. Uh, we first use the EBL to draw some patterns and uh, do, and then make local gates with gold. Then we cover everything with half name oxide or static electric. Then we transfer India multiple nine nanowires uh, with half covered tin shell. This nanowires we recently reported in a science in science. Uh, those nanowires were growing in crossing shape, so they can shadow each other in a tin flow. Uh, with this RDX, you can see we have pretty like uh, well-isolated tin islands on the nanowires. And it is easy, we just connected the tin shell, so we will have a 1D Joseon junctions. And uh, then we apply the current source and measure the voltage across this device. With this SEM picture, you can see that the junction has a junction width of about 120 nanometers. We tune the chemical potential of the junction with the local gates, and uh, we measure it in a dilution fridge with this temperature equal to 50 millikelvin. Like uh, on the definition of the Rushba effect, uh, 
because the current is flowing in the y directions and uh, we are tuning the gate along this z directions. So there should be an effective uh, spin of the field, which is along x axis. And here it should be to go to the minus x directions. And then if we like uh, uh, apply the current configuration and uh, you can see from DVDI as differential resistance, it demonstrates a pretty like uh, <laughs> obvious skewed diffraction patterns. And that matches the theory predictions. Here, if we take two line cards, uh, the 50 and the positive and the negative uh, uh, field, which is equal to 50 millimeter slot. So can, you can also see a pretty obvious uh, current difference in the polarizations. To quantify this uh, so delta effect, we introduced a coefficient gamma, which I think uh, has been used in a lot of papers. Uh, they also named it as the quality uh, effector or vector or something else. So with the same definition, we uh, divided the, uh, we, uh, we have like a difference in the critical currents divided by the critical current strength. And we found this gamma is a symmetry about this uh, X field. And we also like uh, is, uh, want to take some like diffraction patterns along when the field is uh, applied along other directions. And then we found this like uh, a symmetry Diffraction shape only happens when the field is applied along X field. So then we want to study the field dependence, direction dependence. And what we do is we first uh, like uh, rotate the field in the X Y plans. If we uh, if when the field is applied uh, along different directions, from zero degree, which is minus X direction, all the way to the one hundred eighty degrees, you, we can read from this. Delta uh, critical current difference delta I C, and uh, you can see like uh, uh, the minus uh, x degree is like uh, it has higher uh, delta I C at a negative field, but it turns out to be in the positive field at 180 degrees. So and uh, in between which where we have like a smaller x component, we found the uh, non reciprocal transport is like weaker, and we also found the maximum of this critical current difference is achieved around field of uh, equal to 50 millimeter slot. So the next step, what we do is, uh, we just fix the field at 50 millimeter slot and keep rotating the external field in three orthogonal plans. X in, when it is in X, Y and X, Z plans, we found that, uh, and then we extracted the critical current with chick and uh, calculated gamma. When we plot gamma as a function of the theta degree, we found this like uh, it only reaches zero when there's uh, no x components, which we it is y axis or z axis, and uh, we found that it is getting stronger when it is just along x axis. So, <clears throat> and in the y z plan, um, as expected, so you can see the gamma sticks to the zero. So here we we like uh, conclude that um, this effect is. <clears throat> And um, rela is related to the X field component and they're not related to the other directions. So that's the uh, uh, field direction dependence. So to understand it, we like uh, do a uh, simulation with quant code and it is based on a tight bonding model which has the Hamiltonian like this. <clears throat> so this, uh, uh, this tight bonding model considers orbital effect in the momentum and this uh, uh, spin orbital interactions here and the uh, disorder gives us like uh, some freedom to uh, like uh, play with it. So we have a mean free pass which equals to 280 nanometers. That's close to what we have in the actual measurements. And uh, when we say the chemical potential equal to 20, which is three conduction bands, T equal to 50 millikelvin, we found that uh, our simulation results have pretty good agreement with our measurements results. So this means that uh, <clears throat> we can like explore more of what we found uh, based on simulation. So this is about field direction and dependence. Then we study the gate effects. <clears throat> so what we do is we first uh, take two 2D scan uh, the field which is called to uh, same have same strength but update the signal signs. So you can see that if we extracted the critical current and uh, calculate the gamma. Then we found this gamma is can be tuned by this gate. 
and uh, it's like a symmetry about this uh, X field. Oh, sorry, sorry, this, this label is wrong. This is X field. Uh, 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 no, this is gamma. It, never mind. So then we also found this simulation shows similar results as what we got. So then what, uh, what we want to see is like, uh, is the delta effect really driven by the gate? Because there could be another explanation that uh, because uh, the gate which is more negative, the critical field is smaller. And uh, when the gate is larger, the critical field is also larger. So it may be just we are like a shrink or scratch uh, like uh, this gamma trace. So it's possibly just uh, that the negative ga uh, gate, this gamma is like uh, going to, and we also found that the uh, gamma is getting larger when it is close to the critical field. So it could be that the uh, negative field, the gamma is close to the critical field, so it has larger values. So to further explore this, what we do is we take a lot of gamma, like uh, uh, in a series of field. So we first uh, found that uh, this uh, critical current strength is symmetry about the field. Then if we plot a lot of gamma together, we can see that there are the red regions corresponding to this red gamma trace and blue region corresponding to this blue gamma trace. So we found this gamma is like a, a symmetry about the field all the time. However, we didn't, uh, and uh, we take a lot of, uh, we take several to these maps from several devices, but we didn't see that this uh, strength of gamma like uh, have a, a pretty significant change when we tune the gate. So, so far we still have this question, like uh, can we really tune the delta effect by the gate? And we don't have a actual um, clear answer about it. Uh, however, like uh, in the theory, we found this strength of gamma like a deep increase when we like uh, have like larger chemical potential. But then so far we still contributed because we are also tuning the transmission, the old disorder level in the junction. And we are, not, we, can, we, can, we are still thinking that we cannot contribute it because we, we are really uh, like tuning the spinometer interactions or this is superconducting out. Um, but something good is like, uh, we found this is a pretty universal effect. We measured six devices with semi geometry and uh, they all show superconducting diode effect in three um, cooldown. So they all show this effect. Then uh, we will also want to study the temperature dependence. So what we do is we fix uh, a gate voltage and a field where we can see a uh, uh, non receivable transport, which is superconducting diode. And then we slightly increase the temperature with the PID control. So you can see here the gamma is like a keep de decreasing when we raise the temperature. And we can also compare the diffraction pattern at uh, low temperature and high temperature, like a 50 millikelvin and 1.1 kelvin. You can see this gamma is like uh, become much weaker at higher temperature. So here we see that this uh, delta effect is tem temperature dependent in your device and it's getting weaker at higher temperature. So then to like uh, uh, explain this, uh, here we give a minimum model for delta effect because we still want to understand it based on the typical expression of those injunctions. So first uh, here, if we consider not uh, first and second harmonics and uh, introduce the extra delta phi zero terms, we found there will be a shift of ground state phase, which is delta phi zero, half of delta phi zero. And if we plot the, um, the current phase relation and uh, give the sum of I1 and I2, first and second harmonics, we can uh, extract it, the critical current in the positive and negative bars, IC plus, IC minus, they are different. They are different. So with this model, we can also uh, like reproduce the skilled diffraction patterns. And uh, we can have, when we play with this like uh, beta, we can have uh, the gamma trace, which is pretty close to what we observed in experiment. So what we want to see about this model is, if we want to like reproduce such like skill shape, we we must uh, we must have the second harmonic included, and we also need to have a delta phi zero, which is only related to the X field, uh, included. And then we can like reproduce these uh, diffraction patterns. 
So here I also want to compare our results. This is from our model, this is from our measurements, and this is from the simulation. You can see that uh, they are pretty have pretty good agreements with each other. And then we want to ask, so how is the speedometer induction related to the Delta effect? So to compare that, so we here we take the different combination of terms. First, if we only consider Zeeman field, then you can see that the gamma is just a straight line. It's a symmetry, and it's just symmetry about the X field. If then we just uh, apply the, uh, introduce the spin orbital interaction by the no orbital effect. We can see it shows uh, a symmetry shape, but it's pretty weaker uh, than what we observed in experiments. And then if we uh, apply uh, orbital effect, but no spin orbital interactions, we will see uh, a symmetry which is uh, about uh, B, about uh, like 150 milliliters long. So this effects is, uh, uh, we already observed, and they, and uh, we also found this uh, symmetry is independent about field directions. So and this effect we also observe in our experiments. You can see that there is a small difference uh, when the field is applied out of plan, which is BZ in our like uh, axis in our geometry. And uh, but we want to see that they usually distinguish it from the actual superconductivity effect, which is have critical current difference close to the field around zero field. So you can see there are like a two different uh, phenomena. And for this uh, orbital effect only, we think it uh, uh, deserves further discussions and uh, explorations. And then, and at last, uh, we introduce both spin orbital interaction and orbital effect. And then we can see we can like uh, best produce what we observed in our experiments. So we also studied the current phase relationship from our simulation. And we found that uh, uh, it also like uh, matches our predictions. Only when the field is aligned x directions, we can see the shift of ground state phase. And uh, when the field is along y and z direction, you can see it's pretty still pretty similar to what we have typical current phase relation. And then we do a further uh, expansion of the current phase relation uh, in Bx. So we found that uh, not only we have a sine term, we also have a, a pretty large uh, cosine terms. So then if we combine them together as a sine terms, we found there is a constant, but the constant is pretty small, like less than 1% of the uh, uh, magnitude of, uh, of the current. So we just drop it. And uh, then if we plot the amplitude of this like a combined sine term, we found that only the first and second harmonics uh, contri uh, which are uh, contribute the most. Um, and uh, so which is also like a matches uh, what we have in a model. So, but uh, we stopped our discussion here because we think uh, simply by a uh, simulation is not enough to really have, uh, to really get the uh, um, actual situation in, 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 in the superconducting delta, superconducting delta. So, what we think is we need to have a quantum interference device. And now we are uh, we already fabricated and uh, going to like measure it. And uh, we also want to control, uh, want to see that if we can actually control the superconducting delta effect and further also control the spillover interaction by joint chemical potential. And as a summary, what we have is we have non reciprocal supercurrent transport in 1D nanowatts, Johnson junctions. And the way rotating the field shows this non reciprocal transport is related to the spin orbital effective field. And uh, this effect is universal over chemical potential. And uh, we have a lot of devices shows the similar results. And uh, we, we studied temperature dependence. And uh, we give a minimum model, consider high harmonic, uh, high order harmonics, and uh, in the context of five zero Johnson junctions. Finally, all simulation indicates superconductivity that is related to, to both orbital effect and spin orbital interactions. And thanks for your attention. Please let me let me know your questions.
Thanks, Bowman, for the nice talk. I don't have any particular questions myself, but if anybody else, it, it, was, it was very clear to me. Um, if anybody else has questions, I think it would be okay to just go ahead and unmute. Yeah, I do have a question, actually. Um, uh, it was a nice talk, but could you show one more time the interference patterns, uh, please? The ones you showed in the beginning? You say this? Yeah, on the next slide, please. Yeah, those. So here, uh, if I'm looking correctly, the y-axis and x-axis have roughly the same periodicity, you could say, in these uh, two interference patterns. Yes. But the y-axis here is along the wire. Is that correct? Uh, y-axis, oh, sorry, it's my bad. Y-axis should be like a auto plan. Like a, I, I just make this blender figures, my bad. Ah, okay. Oh, yeah, yeah. No, then, no, my bad. then it makes sense. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Then it, if it's along the junction. No, okay, that, that was my my question. Thank you. Okay, and the IC one is asking your IC I minus are switching current by swiping current bars along positive and negative directions. Uh, no, please. Uh, we are swiping current uh, just along one direction in each these two different figures. And uh, or oh, IC plus IC minus is just a uh, switching current that we read from those 2D scan because we are using the differential resistance to show the, for, to read the resistance. And uh, we can read from the resistance uh, to get the uh, IC plus IC minus. I think uh, this one is more clear. So if we take a long card, you can see there is a change of resistance from zero uh, to like uh, about four kilo. And uh, we read the switching current based on these peaks. I may ask a question which is related to what was just asked in chat. Um, if you, I mean, you can measure uh, two different uh, critical currents, which also uh, Vuka was just asking. Um, you can measure the depairing current, which is coming from zero applied current and increasing it and seeing when a finite voltage drops, right? And you can measure the retrapping current, which is coming from a large current oh, and checking yeah. when voltage goes to zero, right? And so I was wondering whether these two are the same or whether they are different and whether they have different uh, gammas, or different asymmetries. Oh, yeah, I, I see. Like, uh, so. I think uh, what you are considering is because uh, hysteresis, right? So like, uh, because in, if we consider some like uh, natural hysteresis in the device, if we like uh, swiping in one direction and then in another direction, there will be a difference. Exactly. And also, if I may comment further, there's basically models which predict uh, uh, asymmetric retrapping current. So coming from high voltage, uh, high current bias but a symmetric uh, depairing current uh, coming from zero current bias. Oh, so yeah. One of them can be asymmetric depending on the apply direction and the other one can be symmetric uh, in the same device. Uh, yes. So I think uh, to answer this question first, uh, so if we think uh, in a, a symmetry, then like uh, just coming from the device itself, then it wouldn't be such like skewed shape in the field. Uh, you you do you, do you get what what I mean? Because like if we have a symmetry, just like a uh, retrapping and the trapping like critical current, they like uh, always get difference. They should like uh, showing in all the field, no, like no matter in positive or negative field, because like uh, one side of the critical current, if uh, I have the critical current uh, scan, keep in uh, one directions, then there will be always a uh, one like retracting critical current. That they are they are larger than the another side. Right, uh, no matter like uh, in what field directions. Okay. Um, yeah, but but so I mean, uh, I'm just uh, wondering yeah, about. Yeah, yeah, yes, and uh, actually, uh, so why I'm showing this device because uh, this device is pretty symmetry, like uh, at the beginning. Uh, I don't, uh, I don't get it. Uh, so like, uh, we don't have hysteresis in this device. So this future is pretty clear. Okay. But in our following device, we do have this asymmetry, like you, you mentioned, is, which is going is due to the hysteresis. So mm -hmm. for all our following measurements, we are like uh, always going from the zero field, zero current source, and goes to negative and positive bias. And okay. actually, 
uh, so both, both another, like uh, th uh, another thing like you can see is if we have the perfect superhand layout, then and um, then the gamma should be like a, a symmetry about zero field. But you can see even like uh, across the zero field, there are still some red regions. And these red regions, and uh, here you can see it's also across the red, red zero field. This red region is via like hysteresis uh, caused. Yeah. And uh, but however, with when the field is like a, a turn on, we can still use those like delta effect to like uh, having some retrapping field. Maybe uh, let's let's say for example at the beginning the retrapping field is larger than the trapping field uh, current, but with the field the retrapping field current will somehow like uh, decreasing faster, and still get this like uh, delta effect, even though like it crosses uh, zero currents zero field. Um, yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Thank you very much for the answer. Uh, and thank you again for the talk. Uh, Okay, are there any more questions? Uh, if I may moderate, um, I think we answered the questions in chat.